In this video, we'll be talking about chop history. So chop history is a really great way of getting um, deep information out of our network. So uh, let's uh, just start with a very simple example. Uh, we'll start with an LFO uh, that's being fed into a trail chop. So uh, as you can see, um, as the LFO uh, creates uh, new data here, uh, our trail chop is actually uh, moving a window uh, in time. So this is about four seconds worth of data that you can see moving through here. Um, if, we, uh, if we middle mouse over this, we can see that we have about four seconds of recorded data um, that's trailed off of this sample. So the right Right half of this uh, graph is the most recent data. And then as uh, more and more are recorded, we'll see that data move to the left side of the screen. So we can increase this window length by just adjusting this parameter here. And now all of a sudden we have 10 seconds of data that will be recorded once we fill in all of the different um, uh, samples here. So there we go. Uh, and if we adjust certain things about the LFO, we can see that reflected in our trail. So I just made it a little faster and you can see the frequency of our LFO uh, just went up uh, here and now we've, uh, we've decreased it a little slower. So this is a great way of having uh, time become a factor in your networks. Um, again, another, another way to use the trail chop, uh, which, is, which is really uh, fascinating, is to instead of have a specified rolling window length, you actually use grow length as a property. So you can just, or a parameter. So you can just turn that on. And now the trail will re continue to record, um, you know, as, as, long as, as long as you have the memory for it, um, it'll continue to record out a certain amount of time uh, here in our, um, uh, our chop. So uh, you can see we're passing 30 seconds and things like that. Um, and this is, this is really great because what you can do instead of uh, setting its capture to time slice, which captures pretty much every frame that's being rendered, you can do it so it's only when the, um, the LFO cooks. So this is a really great way of, of grabbing data that you know, might have existed uh, uh, beforehand or after, um, but only when the thing that's feeding it is actually um, uh, uh, rendering. So this is a, another really handy feature of Trail. I'm going to now show you a, an example of how you can use history to create um, uh, things that you might not expect. So uh, here in uh, in, in the other part of my network, I'm going to lay down a container and then a panel chop. And a panel chop uh, basically gives you the user interaction from a container. So if I were to just drag this container down onto the panel and then make it viewer active, you can see as I move my mouse um, over the panel or click in it, uh, we get a bunch of different uh, chop information coming off of that. Uh, so I suggest deep diving into some of these because they can be really useful um, you know, in, in creating user interfaces. But what we're really going to be focused on are these two, roll U and roll V. So these uh, essentially give you the cursor position on a container. So as I move my cursor around, you can see that those values change. Uh, and this is um, actually going to be the first part of a little drawing network that we're going to make. So the next thing here is to... Uh, record where our cursor has been. So we can do that again with the trail chop. Um, and the trail chop, as we move this around here, you can now see has a history of where our cursor has been. And this is really important because we can use both of these coordinates to draw a line. So if I use a limit sop, uh, the limit sop basically takes a multi-sample chop and can draw a line using all of the different samples. So here I'm going to drag the trail onto the limit so that it, it um, populates accordingly. And then in these parameters, I'm going to set the X channel to roll U and the Y channel to roll V. And now as I move my cursor around in this container, you can see that the line is being created uh, where my cursor is. So we're essentially drawing this line uh, in real time here. And this is really useful for creating, uh, you know, a whole ton of visual effects using user input. So uh, next, we're going to talk about using uh, uh, history to uh, capture information about 
a user's gestures or a user's position. So if if I have this same network here, the, the role U, role V, and I wanna know where a user is has been hanging out uh, for the longest in this window, uh, we can use trail to determine that uh, and even trigger things off of it. So as I move my cursor around here, you can see in the upper right corner, uh, this is actually closest to one and one. So uh, what we might do is take this trail um, information, this, this history, and analyze it with an analyze chop. And Analyze is going to take all the samples in this, in this uh, multi-sample chop and do something with them. And in this case, we're going to, we're going to just average them together here. Um, so uh, all of these will be averaged into uh, these two values. So as I move my cursor around, you can see that that average is uh, approaching where my cursor is. So this is a really great way of kind of um, gently moving um, the values to follow your cursor or uh, giving a level of confidence in knowing where the cursor is at this point in time. Uh, so uh, if we were to take these uh, channels that are coming off of this analyze and then maybe throw them through a logic, we can uh, determine some bounds here. So uh, we can give these um, a set of bounds, so off when outside bounds, and then we'll set our bounds to 0.9 and then maybe the channel pre-op will just invert that. So uh, now as I move my cursor around, if I bring my cursor to that upper right uh, location, once the average uh, reaches a certain uh, level, uh, the logic will flag high, which could mean that you're going to you know, run an animation or do whatever because that, that user has achieved your, your, um, your interaction zone up here. And lastly, what we might do just to get a single value out of that is uh, multiply them together. Uh, and I'll use the uh, combined channels up here to do so. So now as I move my cursor around, you can see that, oh, I might wanna you know, trigger uh, an event uh, when um, I move my, my cursor to the upper right here. So this was uh, an example of how you might use uh, the history of chop data to uh, generate some interesting effects.